Hi, this is Peter Wolfel, and I'm sitting in front of Rudy's garden, a masterpiece that he has been working on for the last 10 years. And the most amazing part of it is he started only at the age of 85 to do this. And now he's almost 95. His birthday will be on September the 11th, 2020, when he will be 95. I'm hoping, if all goes well, that with the cooperation and assistance of the City of Toronto, that we can do something special for him. Here's a short interview with Rudy. And to find him, we need to walk past the transmission lines, which is just north of Finch and west of Sentinel Road. And then going down the hill, we see a bridge which crosses Black Creek. And it's very peaceful and relaxing here. And you can see then the Black Creek Recreational Trail. And then up ahead we find... Here's the garden that was created by Rudy about 10 years ago. And it's still being maintained by him every day to this day. Every day he needs to fill in some water into a watering can and walk up these stairs and then walk all the way up to the top so that he can keep the flowers blooming. Hi Rudy. Hi. How are you doing today? Hot, hot, hot. How's all the planting going? Uh, okay, so far. What are you working on today? Oh, just weeding and cleaning up. Yeah, that's got to be a big job, never ending. Too, too bad this year all my snap dragons didn't come up, I don't know, for some reason. Do you ever use any kind of fertilizer on these things? Yeah, some of them. I, I give fertilizer. Iris is beautiful. Three different colors I got. Oh yeah. White, purple. Well, I mean three. Uh, two. Over there? Yeah. Prolific. They multiply so fast I have to divide them every two years. Pretty. Yeah. I love those lilies. <laughs> That's what I started. It used to be a, a swamp here. Yeah. Um, mosquito infested, full of debris, a, a deep hole. So one day I walked here and I saw a little patch of bluebells there. <laughs> the debris. So I cleaned them up and, and they, they uh, developed into, a, they, they multiplied into a big area. So when I saw the bluebells struggling to get out, I cleaned the whole swamp up. I brought in soil, I raised it up two feet, drained it. There's my drain in there, in the hole. And... Uh, Started planting. I see. And that goes into the culvert under the pathway and into uh, the black creek. Okay, okay, so good. That's how Drain it underneath here. Raise it to the whole, uh, up two feet, the whole area. Mm -hmm. So now it stays dry and Beautiful. that's where I started from and then I kept And going. that was about 10 years ago? 10 years ago. 
and then I kept going and going until I used up the dead trees that the hydro people cut down and dead trees that died of natural death. I cut them down, cut them up and put it for support. So in a storm, the soil would wash all the plants down. So now it's retained and they have a chance to grow. Planks I brought from my home. Okay. And, uh, uh, neighbor took down, I told you before, I believe. Yeah. A huge fence, 150 foot fence with yeah. pressure treated boards. I cleaned them all up and brought them here and used them up. Right. And you had the way to transport it here was with your bike. I have a bike with a, with a board on the back <laughs> and I put it on the, on the board and then walk it over here. My God. You have something similar at your home, I think you told me as same, well. Same setup. I got that little ravine. At Tobamori, mm -hmm. there's a, a little uh, ravine running through behind my house, and uh, it's the uh, same, uh, same principle. I, I right. terrace it all up and clean it all up, the whole ravine, right. and uh, have the same setup. Not quite as big as this area, but uh -huh. quite a size. Metro Region and Conservation Authority, they came by at the beginning, and they, they say, you see, I didn't do any harm to the environment, mm -hmm. so they left me alone. <laughs> and that was about 10 years ago yeah, when you well, started? Yeah, they came by about three, four years later when okay. I really started going. Uh -huh. I just went little by little. At were first. they impressed with what you did, what you accomplished? Yeah, they were, they, they were quite impressed. But, well, it's amazing what you've done, and, and what, what really is amazing to me is, is the age at which you even started this project. You were 85, it's, it's 10 years ago, and you're almost 95. I am almost 95. So, uh, 95, that uh, means, you know... 9-11. On September 11, yeah. which is also famous for other things. That's right. Um, it's Rudy's birthday, and I'm hoping that we can maybe have a little party for you or something this year, you know, to celebrate that. Yeah. When, when a lot of people are already, <laughs> I hate to say it, passed away, or they're in wheelchairs, or they're in a nursing home, you're only just beginning a project that's very labor intensive. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I come here all summer long, every day. Every day, yeah. from starting in? April, as soon as the frost gets out, I am here. And when it freezes up, I'm <laughs> Which is maybe October or October, sometimes October, sometimes November. One year I had, I was still working in January. Crazy! It was such a mild January. I came here and did some work. <laughs> <laughs> and you planted all these trees as well? Yeah, all the evergreens, everything you see is all planted. I dug it out of the bush someplace and brought them here and planted all. Yeah. And I, I trimmed all the, pruned all the trees so they are. They were all covered in in vine. You oh, know, yeah. The, the vines that were hanging down. That were no, they're climbing up. Oh, they're climbing up. And okay. they are they, they are so. If you go back there, you will really see a section. They cover. They went up to the top of the trees. They grow fast. They grow so fast. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe I used to have those on my house. They, <laughs> and they build uh, yeah. up a dome on top of the trees, and the trees die. So I cut them all out, up, uh, all off at the roots, dug out even the stumps, wow. the roots. Wow. And then the trees started thriving. Now look what, they were all uh, half dead, all the trees. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, like this one here, that beech tree. Okay. Jeez. Difficult is taking water up. Well, at my age. Yes. I, at first it was no problem. I got two pails, I could carry it easy, but now, I have trouble with one pail. <laughs> I have to use a. <laughs> well, plus it's quite a distance you have to go there. Did oh, yeah. you did you make those little steps as well yeah, over steps. there? I dug a little well and a little hole so I can yeah. have water even if the creek dries out. Uh, sometimes the creek is uh, in a hot summer. There's not much water in the creek, so mm -hmm. I, I have always water because I dug a little well. <laughs> And then you have to take it up all the steps, and, and you, you generally water more near about, the top, I think you're telling. about 50 you. steps up to, to the top. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you need the water the most, typically. Yeah, of course. That's the highest point that that's dry. And then the and water runs here, down. The water sort of seeps down, 
lot right. of parts. What did you do before, when you were younger, like what was what was your job? What's My your, job? Yeah. was uh, in construction. I was supervising a project for the, mostly for the Toronto uh, school board, building schools, recreation centers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That was my job for most of my years. And where are you from originally? Originally I was born in Poland. After the Polish war, we had to leave Poland and went into Germany. So, so that's where I came from, to Canada. Right. That would have been in the, in the Second World War. No, there. yeah, I, I came here after the Second but the, the Polish war was in September 39, as you know, oh. Hitler invaded Poland. Right. 39. Right. And two weeks the war was over. And then Hitler and Stalin, they made a pact that all people of German descent in Poland could be taken out into, the, uh, into Germany. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I stayed in Germany till I came to Canada. Quite. I was 15 years old. Wow. Okay. When, so uh, when we had to flee, uh, yeah, we were refugees. Right. 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 But luckily, you weren't one of the uh, the ones that ended up in the concentration camp, like some of the other Polish people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah but we wouldn't have because we were of German descent. And oh, you're German descent. Yeah. Uh -huh. In Poland, I was born and I was Polish citizen. But after uh, I became a German citizen, I was in a prison camp too. Really? I, well, I, I got drafted in, in the German, into the German army at 17. And then uh, when the Amer Americans invaded Normandy, I was right there. And I got captured the first day they, they came in. Uh, so, and then I was two years in American. And, uh, Prisoner of, prisoner of war camp. Okay, well, at least they probably treated you a little nicer than maybe and, if you yeah. had been in the Russian camp. I got or... lucky I could have been killed. So right. I was happy I got captured. Yeah, so it probably <laughs> made you safer. Yeah. And, it, and also what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, right. And that's why you're so strong today still, oh, well. at almost 95 years old. Yeah, well, I, I grew up on a farm and always worked hard all my life. Yeah. Last thing I want to know, is what keeps you so healthy? Like other, I know hard work is part of it. What hard you're doing work here. Hard the most important thing, and then of course healthy living. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I eat healthy food. I keep busy all the time. So. What's your diet like? Oh, uh, Do you eat um, everything, or is no, it mostly nothing special? Everything that grows and, and, and but a lot of vegetables and vegetables. Yeah, I like meat too. Uh, and yeah, we eat a. Uh, uh, Back home in Poland, we ate a lot of soups because we were. Uh, Poland was a poor country, and mm -hmm. we were, my parents were very poor, mm -hmm. so we didn't we couldn't afford much meat or stuff. So, but but they grew their own. We had a little farm, and they grew their own veggies, and uh, so we ate a lot of veggies and got potatoes cooked cooked with soup and some. Right. Well, the exercise, you think, is the most important thing? For me, that's the most important thing. It keeps you healthy? Yeah. If, if and, it and it also reduces stress. Yeah. Oh stress yeah. is a big killer it nowadays. It calms me. You know, when I come here, it calms me completely. I feel at, like uh, I cannot describe it. At peace. I feel good. At peace. Yeah. Relax. Another world. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Okay. We need more people like you in the world, you know, who who are, are less selfish, that are, are thinking about other people, you know, trying to do something good that make other people happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> your first name is Rudy, R-U-D-Y. Yeah. And your last name? Riske, R-I-S-K-E. About three years ago, uh, somebody phoned the star. Toronto Star, and they came down here and made a short interview, and they were going to write up a story, but I never saw it. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, maybe this is going to be on television. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, buddy. Okay. <laughs>